you take this thing now and you... If you take your circle and you start to increase the size of it, the radius gets bigger, the area gets bigger. It gets bigger. Both of them are changing as we go here. Are those rates related to each other? If you had to estimate up on the screen there, how? what do you think the radius is there? One what? <laughs> One foot? One It's one one hand span, okay? So we got one span. Let's call that a span. One span, and now how big is it? Approximately, you're estimating two spans. It so if I if we go from here one span to three spans in one second, what's the rate of change for that radius? Three spans per second, okay? Three spans per second. Is that rate related to the rate that the area is changing? Could we figure out how many square spans per second? We could, right? The rates are related. If I, guys, you're going you're gonna to totally lose. Like, this is not an easy section, so let's kind of refocus here. I know you're all giddy about squirrels and spans and all of this. It can help you understand. If you If you go too far with it, and you can't get past it, then it won't help you learn. The rate, you could, res, you know, it's, it's, it's good for us to think about it in some non-traditional units so we think about what's happening. If you're measuring the rate, the radius is changing in spans per second. If you change this slowly, the rate would be pretty slow then, right? If we go from one span to three spans in 10 seconds, that's going to be a much lower rate of change for the, ra for the radius, right? How does the rate that the circle is changing when we go slower? Like when the rate that the radius is changing is slower, is the rate that the area is changing, is that slower as well? Yes, because they're directly proportional. They're directly related to each other by this formula here, right? You can use calculus to figure out exactly how they're related to each other. All right? As long as you understand what each of these mean first. This is the key, right? You have to understand what each of those mean. This would be measured in, or could be measured in, well, let's start with the one we just thought about. Radius dr dt could be measured in spans per second. It could be measured in meters per hour. It could be whatever, right? This could be, you know, an oil spill on the water and the radius of a circle expanding slowly as the oil spreads out. Whatever you're using, it could be meters per hour, meters per second, meters per year, whatever, right? If if you were measuring in those units, then this would be, I guess, spans squared per second, or it could be meters squared per hour, or whatever, right? Those are the Those are the units that you would be using. Since there's a formula here that directly relates those two quantities, area, and radius. You can use calculus to quickly find exactly how those rates are related. So we will have to do that over here. Get rid of this. You go to a different color here. If you start with A equals pi R squared, if we want to know these rates re related to time, if you do the if you if you differentiate both sides with respect to T differentiate, in other words, find the derivative with respect to, with respect to t. You have to give respect to t. I don't know why it's with respect to, but where that's the variable, right? You have to, you have to bow to time to give it respect or salute it or something. I don't know. If you, that was, that was closing in on strike three, by the way, but I can't help it. <laughs> Um, D, D, T. And then, actually, I'll write it underneath there. If we say derivative with respect to time of this side is derivative with respect to time of that side. Work. 
there's no T in the thing anywhere, right? There's no time. Like if you you need uh, you need the chain rule to be able to do this, right? This is why this comes after. On this side, we can just write that as d a d t. That's what we want, right? That's one of the quantities we want here. We want the rate of change of area with respect to time. On this side, that's one of the things we want. On the other side, this is not this is a, a function in terms of r, but we can differentiate it. You have to think: Are these constants or variables? Is this is this pi here a constant or a variable? It's a constant, so I'm going to put it outside here. I'm going to leave this as red for now because we haven't done anything with it. I'm I'm going really slowly with this because it probably helps to have every single step for at least the first one written out. Now, so maybe we should even write here: This is constant, and we should use the thinner pen. This is a constant, so it just can come right outside. Constant. The the radius is though it what is it? It is a variable in this situation. You have to think, are they variables or constants in terms of what you're doing here? Since it's a variable, you have to include it in your differentiation here. So this is equal to pi times what's the derivative derivative with respect to time? of radius squared. Yeah, it's 2r, but that's that's the derivative with respect to radius times dr dt, or r prime. I want to keep it as dr dt so we really keep track of what it is that we're comparing it to, right? This is just the chain rule here. You might want to even say, write down for yourself that that is using the chain rule. Use chain rule. This is your formula that you can that you can write. You know, you could you could put it in terms like mathematicians would do. For some reason, they write the actual number constants first, and then things like pi, and then things like r, and then the derivative things. This is a formula that relates the rates involved. This is, here's your variables that you have in this situation. Rate of change. I did not leave nearly enough space to explain all this. Rate of change of area. Can we put with respect to WRT time? One of those abbreviations probably means something else in terms of texting or MSN stuff, but uh, there I go again. That's strike four, I think, but it's okay. You can you can cope now. This is a uh, <laughs> rate rate of change of. Radius with respect to time. And then the, the formula that you've generated using calculus involves another variable. It, it's multiplied by the, by the radius itself, right? Radius. Those are the variables involved, and then there's some constants. What this is saying is the rate of change of area with respect to time can be calculated by taking the rate of change of radius and multiplying it by these other things here. Multiplying it by the radius at any given moment. At any given moment, if you take the radius and multiply it by 2 pi and multiply it by how fast the radius is changing at that moment, you get the rate of change of area. All right? What that means is the bigger the radius is, they're not, they're not directly proportional because the radius changes as you go. If you, uh, I, I do have an applet here. If you change from, oh, this is okay. If you change from one to two, a radius of one to a radius of two, 
you end up with four times the area. If you start to talk about rates, just like when you start to talk about velocity graphs instead of position graphs, it's hard to comprehend sometimes. If you start to talk about the rate that the radius is changing, if you double the rate, if you go twice as fast that you're making the circle bigger, it's also, a, it, the, this depends on two things. It depends on the rate that you change the radius, but it also depends on the radius itself. So once the circle is bigger, speeding it up changes the radius, that changes the area that much quicker. Okay? 